Cook and the St. Smyrna family, we welcome you to our Sunday morning church service this morning. Thank you and have a blessed day. That's what you can tell them. Thank you. You Certainly it is not only appreciated, but it is noticed. And I want to take a moment just as senior pastor to say thank you for being faithful and committed to the church. Certainly in this season of challenge, it has been challenging for each of us uh, to remain faithful. So I celebrate you and all that we have continuously been able to do in spite of this challenging season. So let me encourage you to take advantage of the means listed there on the screen before you. Any of those means would be sufficient for you to join us in this moment of giving. Again, my brother, again, my sister, let me say thank you for your faithfulness to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for just waking us up this morning to see another day. In spite of all what's going on around the world, Lord, 
we still give you the praise and glory. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, Lord. Continue to lift him up and his family, Lord. Lord, continue to lift our congregation up, Lord. We pray for our congregation right now, Lord. Lord, we pray for our elder people right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, just bless them where they at right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this church, Lord. Lord, we ask you to go in the hospital and touch the sick and the shed in, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless this service this morning, Lord. Lord, we ask you to move in a mighty way this morning, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We come to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the enemy says. I mean, know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we can ask for according to think to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Come on and lift your hands. Begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, how many know God is able? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. If you know he's able, come on and clap your hand right there, begin to worship. He's able. Come on, let's lift it up. Oh, God is able. Come on, say. God is able to do just what he said. He said he would do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill every promise. Every promise to you. Somebody needs to know. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give but up he on. He won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. Come on, she you know he's able. Come on, clap your hand right there. God is able to say God is able to do just what he said he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill every promise. Every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't but give up. He won't on. give up on you. He's able. He's able. on God cause he won't give up on you don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you somebody needs to know don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you he's able good morning Saint Smyrna what a joy what a privilege it is to be in your presence for yet another opportunity to celebrate our God for who he is. Journey with me quickly 
to Psalm 90, to the 90th Psalm this morning. I want to read just the opening three verses for you, but this morning we will consider it in its entirety. I want to read just the opening three verses for us this morning, Psalm 90. This is a prayer of Moses. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past. And as a watch in the night, you know it sounds so good. Let's read a little further. Thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is old. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength there be fourscore years, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. My, my, my. But verse 11 says, Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. And the years wherein we have seen evil. Here it is, church. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thy work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. For these next few sacred moments we have together. I just want to lift for a thought. It is God. It is God. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. A little more bass, please. When the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me I wonder what have I done that makes this race so hard to run then I say to my soul Take courage for the Lord will make a way somehow. One more time, like a ship, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by, by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raised, and the fury falls down on me I wonder what have I done that makes this race so hard to run say to my soul take courage for the Lord will make a way somehow. Hey, the Lord, He'll make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow, He will take away 
each sorrow if we let him have our burdens right now when the Lord gets so heavy the weight is shown shown upon our brow there's a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make the way somehow one more time the Lord will the Lord will make the way somehow when beneath the cross we bow when the load it bears so heavy the weight is shown shown upon our brow when that load gets so heavy and the weight is shown upon our brow there's a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow one more time the Lord will the Lord will make a way somehow when beneath the cross we bow he will take away each sorrow if we let him have our burdens right now when the load it bears so heavy the weight is shown upon our brow there's a sweet there's a sweet relief there's a sweet there's a sweet relief there's a sweet there's a sweet relief someone knows it early this morning there's a sweet relief there's a sweet relief just in knowing there's a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow the Lord will make a way somehow it is God this morning, I am so pleased and excited that you and I have proof of this shared moment that the Lord has seen fit to wake us up this morning. I am so thankful to be here. The year of 2020 has been one that has certainly been challenging for so many of us from this global pandemic of covid challenges derived from having to socially distance from one another, the challenges that have arrived from misplaced plans, from interrupted goals, from dreams and desires that have been derailed, there's someone who can testify while watching and listening to me that you, like I, am just glad to be alive. This year has been one so challenging that it does not take a financial blessing. It does not take a promotion. It does not take uh, for me to acquire an additional thing. It does not take for God to show me anything else. The only thing I needed today on this morning to make me grateful is to be alive. But while I'm thankful that we are alive, while I am thankful that we have survived COVID, while I am thankful that we are surviving interruptions, derailments, while I'm thankful that we have survived derailed dreams, while I'm thankful that we have survived all that we have gone through, there is no mistake in my mind why or who is the source or the cause of our being here. 
We are not here this morning because we are immune to the COVID-19. Uh, we are not here this morning because we have lived a life so free of illegal activity that the police have not summoned us early. We are not here this morning because we have been so smart or so educationally inclined than our neighbors. We are not here this morning because we are financially financially sound or have made savvy investments but we are here this morning because of one reason and I'd like to suggest early in my sermonic dissertation that that sole reason the sole reason we are here it is God it's not our money it's not our ingenuity it's not what we thought it's not how we move it's not how we live it's not who we know it's not who we are but it is God. I like Psalm 90 because Psalm 90 is a message that Moses, who God saw fit to use to bring his people through great difficulty, to deliver them from trial, to deliver them from slavery, to deliver them from the hand of their oppressor, God uses Moses in Psalm 90 to remind the people of a few things as they are preparing to go into the promised land that God has for them. I'd like to suggest to you that 2020 has been so rough and so horrible that God has to have better waiting for us and there's someone who's listening to me this morning who's testifying screaming and jumping right now preacher that's my point in the message you don't have to say anything else 2020 has been so bad for me that God has to have something better for me well as you and I alike prepare to go into our better promised land let me bless you as God bless me through the word inspired by Moses here in Psalm 90. Psalm 90 opens by Moses saying, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. I'd like to suggest to you point number one, it is God who has sustained us. Uh, point number one derives from verse number one. Moses opens by saying, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place place in all generations. In other words, the psalmist here opens by saying, Lord, you have not just been a safe place for me and my generation. You have not just been a safe place for me and my children, me and my wife, me and my brothers and sisters. But Moses opens by reminding them that it is God who saw over not only them but grandmama and them and those before grandmama and them while I'm thankful that we have a new president elect who's on his way to clean out the White House I must suggest to us this morning our confidence our trust our hope should not be in a Biden Harris ticket but our hope ought to be in the same place our grandmama and them hope was in when Lyndon B. Johnson and those were plotting to keep us where are the people who can testify our hope ought not be in who the president is there's someone who can testify while we're living better now than we've ever lived before driving better living better working better educationing better we're vacationing better everything now we're doing better than we've ever done before but there's someone who can testify it is not because I'm able to vacation it's not because I'm living better than I lived before it's not because I'm driving better or working better than I've ever worked but the reason I am here right now is because the same God who provided for me when I was sleeping in big mama's house head to toe with my sisters and brothers and and cousins in them that same God who kept me then is the same God 
who kept me now. I wish you were sitting here with me at 68 Heary Road so we could call the roll together. But there's someone who can testify. You understand it's not money that has sustained you. It's not the journey you've been on that has sustained you. It's not the decisions that you've made that has sustained you. But there's someone who can testify like Moses in verse number one. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. In other words, there's someone who wants to take about five seconds and tell God, thank you, not only for seeing grandmama and them through, but thank you for seeing my mama through. Lord, not only thank you for seeing my mama through, but thank you for seeing me through. Lord, not only thank you for seeing me through, but thank you for seeing my children through. Lord, not only thank you for seeing my children through, but thank you for seeing my grandchildren that I may never see with my own two eyes. Thank you for seeing them through. Where are the people that can, will, and shall testify with me? Lord, thou has been our dwelling place through all generations. We dwelled in you when they kidnapped us from the golden shores of Africa all the way to these hellacious shores here in this country. You were our dwelling place when we were on Jim Crow's fields picking cotton. And you were our dwelling place when we got our freedom, but they didn't want to let us go. You were our dwelling place when we had to drink out of separate fountains. You were our dwelling place when they showed up to our house with white sheets on their head, burning crosses. You were our dwelling place when they tried to keep us from voting. Where are the people that can testify? The same God who's been with us through all generations is with us right now. I dare you to take about five seconds and just give God a he is sustaining me praise. Ah, it is God who has sustained us. But not only is it God who has sustained us, I would like to suggest to you it is also God who has brought us Listen to what Moses says. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Why? Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pestilence by day. He shall cover thee with his feathers. <laughs> and under his wings shalt thou what? Trust. His trust shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, for, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. I'd like to suggest to you that the only reason Moses mentions this to the children is not so they would puff themselves up in pride. But Moses had to remind them of some of the things that God brought them through. Uh, you, you, you missed it because if you got it, you would be shouting through your screen at me right now. Listen, I didn't say all of the things that God set in with them. I said all of the things that God brought them through. Let me remind you that these are the ones who Pharaoh decided to cause them to make bricks without hay. These are the children who were oppressed so much that they were not given adequate quarters or food food or medicine. These were the original slaves who were disenfranchised, kidnapped and brought to distant lands for the purpose of building another's home. I'd like to remind you that when God sent Moses, that God sent plagues, that there were pestilence, that there was blood, that uh, there were all manner of death upon the children. And watch this. Moses had to remind them, listen, when God sent the pestilence, when God sent the arrows, when God allowed all of these moments to come forward, it was God who did not sit in it with us, but it was God who brought us through. When Pharaoh and them's firstborn were dying, we put blood over the door so that God might bring us through. When their crops were ate up by the grasshoppers and the locusts of the fields, we had already 
gathered our grain in the barns. Where are the people that can testify? I know I've been here. I know I've been there. I know I have this. I know I have that. But let me be clear to you, my brothers and my sisters. I am not here because of this or that. I am not here because I know that or this. But I am here because God. God has brought me. Where are the people that can testify God has brought you through things that other people died in? God has brought you through things that would have crushed and demolished other people. God has brought you through things other people don't even know you've been through. I wish I had you here with me so you could yell at me all of the times God didn't sit in stuff with you but God brought you through where are the people that can testify preacher I didn't need that point I know it's not my money I know it's not my friends I know it's not my education I know it's sure not my family I know it's not my own ingenuity but where are the people who can testify I know it's God when I woke up this morning I knew it was my alarm clock but I knew it was God when I put my feet out of my bed I knew it was nobody but the Lord when I put my pants on my legs and not my shirt on my feet I knew it was nobody but God where are the people watching this morning that can testify with me preacher you can hang up right there because I want to give God and I know it was God praise I know it was God that brought me through the accident I know it was God that healed me of my sickness I know it was God that covered me when I where are the people that can testify this morning I know yeah I know I'm sorry I didn't mean to holler yet I'm sorry here it is this is one of my grandmother's favorite verses of scripture. Right here, verse 7. One of my grandmother's favorite verses in, the, in all of the Bible. Right here. A thousand years. A thousand, excuse me. Shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee only with thine eyes. Shall thou behold and see the rewards. Forgive me, I'm in the wrong verse here. Look at me. So here it is. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom church I, I want you to hear this teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we rejoice and be glad all our days. Verse 15 says, make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto thy children. Here it is, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yes, sir. Yea, the work of our hands, Lord, establish it. Verse number 12 reminds us that not only is it God who sustains us. Not only is it God who has brought us. But there's someone who can testify. It is God who will keep us. I thought you would have been more excited about that at home. To know that it was God who was going to keep you. See Moses had to assure the people. Out of all that they had been through. As they were getting older. And things were changing. And they were going into a new unknown land. That they would never been in before. Moses did not know. How long he would be with them. Moses did not know how long they would be with him. And so Moses now has to tell them, listen, the same way we've made it this far. 
is the same way that we're going to keep on making it. And I don't know who needed to hear this message this morning, but somebody needed a reminder that it is God. I know we've got a new president and all of these things. I know the Republicans are in fear of losing the Senate if we can pull off a victory for Warnock and Ossoff. You need to get out and vote. Uh, But there's someone who can testify that it is not the Democratic Party that is the reason we've been kept thus far. There's someone who can testify this morning that you are fully aware that Moses was not just speaking for the children of Israel. There's someone who can testify that Moses was not just speaking for Christians everywhere. But there's someone who wants to testify with me that when Moses was speaking in verses 1 through 3, that Moses was speaking for you and I this morning. Because I cannot tell you how many times the Lord has brought me through hard trials. I cannot tell you how many times the Lord has stepped in the middle of messes that I created for myself and the Lord saw me through. I wish I could take a moment just to tell somebody watching this morning that it is not my education that allows me to stand here this morning. It's not just because I was licensed to preach by Rufus Smith, W.J. Johnson, and Steve Daniels that allows me to preach this morning. It's not because I'm Baptist that I'm standing here preaching all this morning. But there's somebody who needs me to remind you that the same reason I'm preaching right now is the same reason you're standing right where you're standing right now. It is, it is God. God is the reason why you and I have the activities of our limbs. God is the reason why you and I are still, still alive. It's not because we've never been to the wrong places. It's not because we've never drank the wrong thing it's not because we've never consumed the wrong thing but the only reason we are here this morning it is it is god it's not because we work out it's not because we don't smoke it's not because we eat healthy it's not because we don't stress But it is because God did it. What are you preaching about this morning? If God brought us thus far, if God saw us thus far through dangers seen, and unseen it is it is it's God yes sir this morning it's God that's going to take us all the way don't worry about tomorrow the same God that saw us through yesterday The same God seeing us through right now is the same God that's going to see us through, through tomorrow. I know what the doctor said, 
but it's God. I know what the lawyer said, but it's God. I know what the bank said, but it's God. I know what your finances say, but it's God. I know what the people in the street say, but it's God. I, I, I don't care what they said, but it is God who woke you up. God who started you. God on your way. God food on your table. God clothes on your back. God medicine when you're sick. God friends when you're lonely God money when you're broke God yeah yeah it is God yeah yeah how do I know that it's God early y'all don't want to help me early early this morning it wasn't my alarm clock yes early this morning it was not my wife waking me up but it was it was God who woke me up and said Marcus get up out of the bed it was God that protected me while I slept last night it was God yeah my soul is happy yeah my soul is happy yes it was God if you know it was God will you do me a favor high five yourself and say self I know it was God that's the reason I'm sitting in church right now. It was nobody. No. No. Nobody but you, Lord. Yeah. I'm done preaching now I said I'm done preaching now but will you do me one favor will you take about five seconds look back over your life and think right now all of the times the Lord brought you through all of the times he healed your body all of the times he paid your bills all of the times he protected you yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. It is. It is God. It is God. The door of God's house is open. If you're watching this morning, the Lord has impressed upon your heart that you need to be saved. Will you just send us a message? But if that's you, will you just pray this prayer with us? Lord, forgive me. I want you to lead my life. I want to follow you. Save me. If you said that prayer with us this morning, you, my brother, you, my sister, you are saved. Our second invitation this morning is for membership. The Lord has impressed upon your heart this morning that you might join us. Send us a message so that we might connect with you.
third and final invitation, baptism, watch care. If the Lord has impressed those moments upon you, if you will send us a message so that we might reach out and connect with you. Nobody but you, Lord, nobody but you, nobody but you, yes, nobody but you, when I was in trouble, you brought me over. Nobody but you, yeah, nobody but you. A little bit more volume, Brother Jones. Nobody but you, just the mic. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. When I was in trouble, Lord, you came to my rescue. Nobody but you, yeah, nobody but you. Good morning, Saints Smyrna family and guests. Thank you once again for tuning in with us for our virtual worship experience. I pray that it found you blessed and well. Uh, my husband preached a mighty word that shouted me. Uh, the, the Lord is, God is um, so magnificent. Even in this uncertain times with presidency and everything going on, don't lose hope. Put all of your hope and your faith in the Lord because he is all we need and all we can rely on. He got us through the Trump administration and he'll surely carry us through this pandemic. Hang in there, we love you and we miss you so very much. Bye.